Hello, my name is Carol May Wittig, a spiritual life coach. Welcome to her Inspirations new series, Emotions A Deeper Knowing. Over the next few weeks, each episode will look at at least one emotion. I want us to have a deeper appreciation for the gift that emotions can offer for us and our growth individually and then subsequently as a society. When we resist feeling and looking at our emotions, it fuels the belief that there's something to be feared. We spend so much time avoiding, suppressing and denying them that we forget that they're there for a reason. By embracing our emotions, we are increasing what we allow ourselves to experience. We deeply learn more about ourselves, we see how much more capable we are of holding and therefore we have more capacity to be there in bigger ways for others. We cannot be destroyed by our emotions. They are illuminating the myriad of tones in our energetic resonance. We're stronger because of them. They are a gift. I want to ask you, do you feel like something is calling you to show up bigger? Do you feel a sense of urgency and a mission to be a conscious creator in this world and not simply a consumer? We're at a pivotal time in human history and if you feel the pull, it's incumbent upon you to take action, to live with authenticity and to express your visions. You know there's a purpose to your life. My purpose is to help you make it happen. And if this message is awakening a curiosity in you, I invite you to follow the link in the show notes and book a call to have a conversation with me to see how I can support you. I'm supporting women who are ready to make their mark in the world. I look forward to speaking to you. And also, if you haven't already, do consider joining the mailing list. You'll receive additional meditation, journaling and inspiration notes to help you on your journey and also additional resources and exclusives. So let's start this episode. This week in A Deeper Knowing, I am covering both shame and guilt. These two emotions are often used interchangeably. And it is possible that the same action or the same event might give rise to the feelings of both shame and guilt. And although they are similar in that they are self-conscious emotions, they present in very opposing ways. So how can we evolve from integrating the lessons from shame and guilt? From Carl Jung, shame is a soul-eating emotion. What is shame? Shame is a deep sense of personal inadequacy or unworthiness that's often tied to one's identity and it's a feeling that there is something inherently wrong with us. It's that painful feeling about how we appear to others and also to ourselves and this is without necessarily having done anything. The focus when it comes to shame on the self is the thinking that I am bad, I'm unworthy, uh, I have no purpose. The longer lasting effects of shame is that it will have debilitating uh, effects on our self-esteem and our self-worth. It also can then lead to self-destructive behaviours, self-sabotage and also go into hiding or withdrawing, going into deep self isolation and even to mental health issues there's this overarching belief that that one does not deserve good things or that we can ever be a good person so if we're sitting with the feeling of shame what can we notice about shame what can we notice that it's showing us holding on to shame and all the self behaviors that come with it that low self-esteem low self-worth self-destructive behaviors is pretty much the opposite of who we are as spiritual beings so the effects of holding on to shame for so long is is showing us contrast to who we are who we truly are in our essence at our core Shame is what we've brought upon ourselves, even if people proclaim that we should be ashamed of ourselves. Ultimately, no one can cast shame upon you. It's a choice that you make. It's a choice to feel that shame. It's a choice to have that feeling and that belief that you're bad or unworthy when that is not true. Shame gives us the opportunity to experience ourselves in our most contracted state, It is probably the biggest lie that we can tell ourselves. And interestingly, on the map of consciousness that is developed by David R. Hawkins, shame is the lowest of the emotions and it's the complete opposite 
to the highest of the emotions, which is enlightenment. So we can see that it is literally at the other end of the spectrum. So what can be created from shame? What can we integrate from the lesson and the experience of shame? Adopting shame shows us our ability to create our reality by proclaiming such heavy words on ourselves that we're bad and that we're unworthy. It shows us how uh, how staying in these states of low self-esteem and low self-worth can create so much pain for us and, and the withdrawing and the hiding. We can sit with our shame and explore whether there is any justification for us feeling that way. We can ask ourselves, was where are these stories coming from? Are those negative stories that I'm telling myself, the way that I'm feeling myself, is that something that I've created myself? Or am I taking on the narrative or something that has been told to me that I've put over my head? This then shows you that you have the power to swing that around. You have the power and the opportunity to change the talk and change the beliefs that you have about yourself and see yourself as good, see yourself as worthy, see yourself as deserving and see yourself as an important part of humanity. Shame also shows us that we have the power of forgiveness and compassion available to us in order to bring ourselves out of that pit of shame. We can look at the areas in our life and see where it is that we feel that we are not worthy. We can ask ourselves why it is not true and then choose ways where we can exemplify where we have worth, where we are better, where we are good. Those feelings of not being enough, not being good, unworthy, bad, is pretty much where a high percentage of society lives. Having these low feelings about themselves, whether it's something that they've adopted in contrast, and in particular there's so much that's being broadcast on social media about what good looks like, and in contrast people feel that they're not that, and are having shame for who they are. It's giving us an opportunity to shine the mirror upon ourselves and start to recognise areas where we are beautiful and where we are worthy and where we are whole. And to guilt, a quote from Voltaire, every man is guilty of all the good he did not do. Shame and guilt can come from the same event, can come from the same action, but guilt is now a, a feeling that you have or a thought that you have done something wrong and you know that you've done something wrong. You understand that you've committed a, a transgression and it just shows you now that you're going against some sort of internal moral code that you have set for yourself. Guilt is our conscious and while we may feel guilty, we may not necessarily feel bad at the same time, which is where now the which is where now we have the separation between guilt and shame. Guilt is more focused on the behaviour where shame was focused on our, ourselves as a person, our identity. So guilt will be telling ourselves, I did something bad, I made a mistake. So what can we learn about this? Well, why is it uncomfortable? Because no one wants to feel that they've created any kind of trouble or turbulence in their life or anyone else's life. And that's why sitting with the knowledge that you were responsible or an instigator of something can be so uncomfortable. So what is it showing us? Well, it's showing us that we are intrinsically of good heart. We are, we are within ourselves wanting to do the right thing and that guilt is just a indicator that we've gone against the core moralistic value that we have within ourselves. And that's the that's the niggle that we feel, that's the guilt that we feel, it's because we know that we've done something that is not correct. Guilt then leads to us wanting to make amends, to change our behaviour and to contribute to our own personal growth. It's a motivator and it motivates us to take responsibility, to make amends. Taking action on our guilt is a powerful indicator that we have the power to shift and change our life. Knowing that we've experienced guilt shows that we have a heart within us that wants to do good for ourselves and in the world. So concluding and comparing and contrasting those 
two emotions very briefly shame is what we feel about ourselves as a person our self-concept based on something that we believe about ourselves or we feel that we have done we've internalized it and personalized it whereas guilt is more so to do with what we have done knowing that we've done something wrong and feeling how out of alignment that is with who we are at the core if you're feeling guilt guilt is showing you that you do have a gauge within yourself that knows what is right if you're feeling shame it's showing you that there's a contraction to feel so out of sorts with the expanse of yourself and I would say this to close that the more that we stay in shame and the more that we believe the persona we have about ourselves within shame is going to fuel the belief that we're not connected or that we're not worthy that we don't have courage we don't have strength there's no truth about this when the opposite is true and opposing that is to feel guilt instigates power within us guilt is prompting us to move towards responsibility to uh, make amends to seek forgiveness whereas staying in shame and not seeing the way out can pull us further into the abyss and loss of sense of ourself I would add to that if we find ourselves feeling guilt when we get that feeling that we've done something wrong our actions are wrong to have the courage to move as swiftly as possible to make amends for what it is that we've done otherwise the more that we keep thinking about the things that we've done we may then begin to identify ourselves with the action and become the action I did a wrong thing I did a wrong thing then soon becomes I am the wrong thing so from the two of these guilt prompts us into action shame prompts us to self-forgiveness self-compassion And to close a couple of quotes, the distinction between shame and guilt is very important since these two emotions may tear a person in opposite directions. The wish to relieve guilt may motivate a confession, but the wish to avoid the humiliation of shame may prevent it. From Paul Ekman. And from Willard Galen. Shame and guilt are noble emotions essential in the maintenance of civilised society vital for the development of some of the most refined and elegant qualities of human potential. Thank you for joining me on this first episode of Emotions, A Deeper Knowing. I hope by just highlighting these emotions over the course of the weeks, it will give you some more understanding of what these emotions really are in terms of their definition, but then also what they are inviting us to do. If you want to find out more about me, you can come to my website, carolmaywittick.com, C-A-R-O-L-M-A-E-W-H-I-T-T-I-C-K.com. Find me on LinkedIn and Facebook, Carol May Wittick, and on Instagram, Kazmik, C-A-Z-M-I-C-K. So until the next episode, thank you for being here. Speak soon.